This is Morning Breath, your drive time devotion sure to jumpstart your day. Hosted by Pastor Matt and Jessica Stahlbaum. Morning Breath starts now. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to Morning Breath, your drive time devotion sure to jumpstart your day. I'm Matt and this is Jessica and welcome to our weekly video podcast and uh, just all around awesome show. Yeah, it's been fun doing it on video. Uh, definitely have to slow down reading, I was told. <laughs> Your mom was like, you read that chapter fast. I'm like, it was a lot of words to read, I'm sorry. But she said, yeah, it was long, so it's good you read it fast. <laughs> That's right, and you can be a part of Morning Breath by going to our website, eccc.us, or you can find our videos on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, and all of that, the best place to find it is on our website or our app, the East Coast app, or our Facebook, East Coast Christian Center on Facebook. And uh, today we're talking uh, through Acts chapter 13. And if you're new to Morning Breath, it is a devotion that we read a chapter of the Bible and then we talk about what God has shown us. You use the SOAP method. Yep. What's that SOAP method all about? SOAP is an acronym and it stands for Seek or Scripture. The O is Observation and the A is Application and the P is Prayer. And it's the way I started reading my Bible probably about five or six years ago now. And it changed the way that I read my Bible. I go to my Bible every morning and I think... I'm actually going to get something out of this versus when I would read it before, it was just to check a box, honestly. So it's changed everything. I get a personal application out of it. We just, I follow along with the morning rest schedule, which is great. And so one chapter a day, and then I'm only looking for one verse to pop out. Sometimes there's several verses that pop out, but I'm just looking for one. And then out of that verse, I do the scripture observation application and prayer. And every time I ask God, what, how can I apply this verse to my life today? And it just, for me, changes everything. Yeah, and I think this is a great time to really uh, press into the Bible. Uh, with a lot of people at home more, staying away, you know, staying at home and during this COVID-19 crisis, I think it's a great opportunity to read our Bibles and do a little more study. And so I'd encourage you to do that. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump in today, we chapter have, today. We have an announcement. One announcement, this just in. We're having a food drop at our East Coast Christian Center, Merritt Island location. And you can find out more information at eccc.us slash events. But it will be this coming Wednesday, April 22nd from 10 to noon. And there's a whole semi truck full of food that's going to be coming to be dropped off for people in need. If you need food right now, please come out. Um, tell your friends about it. Share it on Facebook. We want to get the word out so we can get people the help that they need right now. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. We love that. We're partnering with Second Harvest for that food drop. We're also going to be partnering with uh, Convoy of Hope for the next food food drop and uh, I think it's 20 to 40,000 pounds with each truck. So a lot of food. be incredible. Love to see you there if you need food. Um, Acts chapter 13, verse one, you gonna get started? Yes, <laughs> it's 52 verses, here Woo, we go. You got this. Okay. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets who spoke a new message of God to the people and teachers. Barnabas Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod, Antipas, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were serving the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, Paul, for the work to which I have called them. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them in approval and dedication, and sent them away on their first journey. So then, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When Barnabas and Saul arrived at Salamis, they began to preach the word of God, proclaiming the message of eternal salvation through faith in Christ in the synagogues of the Jews. And they also had John, Mark, as their assistant. When they had traveled through the entire land of Cyprus, as far as Paphos, they found a sorcerer, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was closely associated with the proconsul of the province, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent and, ins and sensible man. He called for Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God concerning eternal salvation through faith in Christ. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for that is how his name is translated, opposed them, trying to turn the proconsul away from accepting the faith. But Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit and led by him, looked steadily at Elymas and said, You, Elymas, are full of every kind of deceit and every kind of fraud, you son of the devil, enemy of everything that is right and good. Will you never stop perverting the straight paths of the Lord? Now watch, the hand of the Lord is on you and you will be blind, so blind that you will be unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately, a mist and darkness fell upon him and he groped around, seeking people to lead him by the hand. 
The proconsul believed the message of salvation when he saw what had happened, being astonished at the teaching concerning the Lord. Now Paul and his companions sailed from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia, but John Mark left them and went back to Jerusalem. Now they went on from Perga and arrived at Antioch in Pisidia, and on the Sabbath day they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading of the law and the writings of the prophets, the officials of the synagogue sent word to them, saying, Brothers, kinsmen, if you have any word of encouragement for the people, say it. So Paul stood up, and motioning with his hand, he said, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our fathers and made the people great and numerous during their stay as foreigners in the land of Egypt. And then with an uplifted arm, he led them out of there. For a period of about 40 years, he put up with their behavior in the wilderness. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave their land to our ancestors as an inheritance. This took about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges until the prophet Samuel. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king. Of him he testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, conforming to my will and purposes, who will do all my will. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel a savior in the person of Jesus, according to the promise. Before his coming, John the Baptist had preached a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course of ministry, he kept saying, what or who do you think that I am? I am not he, the Christ, but be aware one is coming after me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, even as his slave. Brothers, sons of Abraham's family and those among you who fear God, to us has been sent the message of this salvation obtained through faith in Jesus Christ. For those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers who fail to recognize or understand both Jesus and the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, have fulfilled these very prophecies by condemning him. And though they found no cause or charge deserving death, they asked Pilate to have him executed. And when they had finished carrying out everything that was written in scripture about him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days, 40, he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, the very ones who are now his witnesses to the people. And we are bringing you the good news of the promise made to our father's ancestors, that God has completely fulfilled this promise to our children by raising up Jesus, as it is also written in the second Psalm. You are my son. Today I have begotten or fathered you. And as for the fact that he raised him from the dead, never again to return to decay in the grave, he has spoken in this way. I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David, those blessings and mercies that were promised to him. For this reason, he also says in another psalm, you will not allow your holy one to see decay. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was buried among his fathers and experienced decay in the grave. But he whom God raised to life did not experience decay in the grave. So let it be clearly known by you, brothers, that through him forgiveness of sins is being proclaimed to you. And through him, everyone who believes, who acknowledges, G acknowledges, acknowledges Jesus as Lord and Savior and follows him, is justified and declared free of guilt from all things from which you could not be justified and freed of guilt through the law of Moses. Therefore, be careful so that the things spoken of in the writings of the prophets does not come upon you. Look, you mockers and marvel and perish and vanish away from doing a work in your days a work which you will never believe, even if someone describes it to you, telling you about it in detail. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people kept begging that these things might be spoken to them on the next Sabbath. When the congregation of the synagogue had been dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who, talking to them, were urging them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the entire city gathered together to hear the word of the Lord about salvation through faith in Christ. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began contradicting the things said by Paul and were slandering him. And at the same time, Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and confidently, saying, It was necessary that God's message of salvation through faith in Christ be spoken to you Jews first. Since you repudiate it and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life, now we turn to the Gentiles. For that is what the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have placed you as a light for the Gentiles, so that you may bring the message of eternal salvation to the end of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying, praising and giving thanks for the word of the Lord. And all those who had been appointed, designated, ordained to eternal life by God believed in Jesus as the Christ and their Savior. And so the word of the Lord regarding salvation was being spread through the entire region. But the Jews incited the devout, prominent women and the leading men of the city and instigated persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them forcibly out of their district. But they shook its dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were continually filled throughout their hearts and souls with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Amen. Man, good job. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to suggest that 
when you read 50 verse chapters that we switch off the amplified yeah because you know, it, <laughs> it's reading, almost like a hundred verses it is i'm reading the amplified translation which i love this bible it is a joyce meyer commentary inside as well the everyday life bible and it's amazing but it's a lot wordier than the typical new living translation or NIV, new king james or yeah. niv so yeah i switch bibles every year actually and uh, i'm doing the international version this year it's i love doing it because it makes me look at things in a new light and if you're unfamiliar with what translations are, which probably most of you know what that is if you're watching Morning Breath, but if you're not, um, you know, some words can be translated uh, kind of differently depending on, you know, let's say uh, the emphasis that the, um, the interpreter is looking at the word. And so there might be a difference between favor or grace that would be exchanged in a, uh, in a, a translation. One, one translation might say favor, one might say grace, but the same root word is charis, which that's uh, the basis for charisma or charismatic grace, you know, someone that's of grace or someone that's of favor. That's the base word there. So that's just a little tidbit on, uh, on uh, translations. But I really like the first part of this chapter. When they were worshiping the Lord, fasting, the Holy Spirit began to speak. And I just started to think about when I want to hear God's voice, when I want to know what God has to say, what do I do? Like, you know, sometimes I don't do anything. I don't really try to listen. I don't set myself apart. I don't stop. I don't slow down. I just kind of like want it. And I want what I want, what I want, you know? But we can see here that Paul actually set time aside to worship God. Not only that, as he was fasting, which means that he said, I'm not going to eat. I don't know how long that was, but let's say it was just an hour. Let's say it was one meal. What if it was one day? It doesn't really matter at this point. We don't know. The point that I'm pulling from this is that I've got to set time apart. The result of this was the Holy Spirit set them apart. He actually grabbed Barnabas and Saul and said, I'm calling you to a work. When we set apart time, God can set apart us for great works. That sounds tweetable. It does. I don't tweet, but if you do, tweet that, Someone okay? Does. When you set time apart for God, he sets things apart for you. And I think it's really important that we can see that. And so then after they fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and they sent them off. And this really began this huge missionary journey for Paul. And, uh, and all sorts of incredible things began to happen in his life. And ultimately he reached the Gentiles, which I could jump into that later if you want to share anything on your part. No, that was, that's awesome. I really like right after that. So they were sent out and they came to this place. Where was that? Cyprus? There yeah. were so many places. Yeah. And Solomus. they came. Salamis? Salamis. Salamis. Salami. Salamis. I love salami. Yeah. Salamis is also known as salamis. Yes. And uh, where am I? Elemis. Elemis, the sorcerer. So they came to this place. They were sent out. They went to this place where they were led by the Holy Spirit. So they were still listening to the Holy Spirit and setting themselves apart in order to hear that word of where to go. They weren't just going like go and wherever the wind took them. They actually were going on purpose to a certain place because God was bringing them there because they had this divine appointment happening with this guy who was the proconsul, which would that be like a governor or mayor or like someone in authority in this place? And this guy had heard what was going on, that this word of the Lord was being preached about eternal life and salvation. And he actually asked for them, Paul, Saul, who's also called Paul, um, and Barnabas to be brought to him. And I just thought that this was the perfect picture of God taking what the enemy meant for evil and turning it for good. Because first they ran into this guy who was a sorcerer. He was actually a false prophet, false prophet, a Jewish guy, and his name was Bar-Jesus, but it was interpreted Elemis, so let's call him Elemis, and he was a sorcerer, and um, he was close to this proconsul. He was maybe, maybe like a trusted advisor to him, and so he tried to get in the way, and he tried to actually stop them from sharing the word, but when Paul realized what was happening, he actually, through the power of God, the guy became blind, and when the proconsul saw this guy become blind and saw the power of God really being worked out within Paul. It proved to him, wow, these guys know what they're talking about. Wow, these guys are actually being sent from God because he was seeing um, 
signs and wonders. And it proved to him that what they were saying was true. And so even though the sorcerer guy was trying to thwart their mission, it was in that that God used that to reveal God for who he truly was to the proconsul. Yeah. And so I looked up proconsul, and it's basically a governor over a province in yes. the Roman Empire. Yeah. And they have much of the power of a consul, which is a governor over a city. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, you know, another thing that stood out to me uh, was that uh, basically here, we go all the way to the end, when the Gentiles are getting ministry, and part of Paul's calling was that he was called to the Gentiles, to be a light to the Gentiles. If you don't know what a Gentile is, a Gentile is me, it's you. If you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. And so basically Christianity was mostly spreading among Jews and then among some Samaritans. And then in Acts chapter 10, I believe, that's when Cornelius, the Gentile, mm -hmm. got a hold of Jesus. And, and in prayer, uh, the Lord called him, and then Peter showed up after Peter had an amazing dream. But then Paul really now goes on this mission, and he's reaching out to Gentiles. And, and uh, when the Gentiles heard that the Lord had said, hey, I'm making you a light for, for the Gentiles. I'm making you a light to these people. They were glad and honored the word of the Lord. And all who were appointed for eternal life believed, right? And so what, what's happening there is, is this group of people who was marginalized uh, from the Jewish world, and which is sad because Jewish people, uh, Hebrews, um, they were really never called to exclude the world. They were never called to, you know, get rid of everyone around them. They were actually called to bring God into the world. And uh, the Jewish culture, uh, which would have been the original Hebrew culture, they were called to be the children of God and to be a light. And uh, wherever they went, Really, they were trying to bring God into those places, and uh, they got to this place where it had become a very isolated uh, culture, isolated away from other cultures, and so that people really didn't get good opportunities to, to follow God. And when Christianity came into the Jewish culture, um, they kind of went back to the original roots because God came to save all mankind, mm -hmm. and uh, not just Jewish people, not just Hebrew people, but everyone. And so... What, what I wanted to bring out here is something I shared actually yesterday in the message in our relationship series was this idea that, um, how much time do we have actually? I, I don't know. Okay. I usually have a clock. Okay. This idea that um, as we are kind of all distancing from each other, we're really beginning to experience what it feels like to be excluded uh, and to really almost want to exclude everyone from our lives. Things like when we're walking down the road, we're like, oh, we see someone coming. Let's go to the other side of the road. Uh, when you're in the grocery store, like Pollux or whatever, and you go to walk around the corner and someone kind of surprises you, you know, you're like taken back and they're taken back. Like, oh, don't get too close. Like putting masks on our face, afraid to breathe the air that they're breathing. Um, these kind of behaviors... Uh, what I feel like the Lord showed me is they were, they're a lot like what many people have experienced in everyday life, but for no good reason. Like to be completely excluded just because of the color of your skin or just because you look different, just because you're wearing a hoodie or just because, you know, you, you come from a different uh, economical status or I'm not comfortable with you, so I'm going to, huh. And it's like I've got my in group, the people that I'm in with the people that I can relate with, you're in my out group, I don't connect. So it's like, no, I don't want to talk to you. I'm not interested in you. And most of us would say, oh, we, we don't do that. We don't do that. It's within human nature for everyone to do that a bit. And I think we've all experienced that just at least a little bit. You know, many of us haven't experienced the full-fledged force of something like racism or prejudice against us, but some of us have. Some of us have experienced flashes of it. Whole groups of people have experienced that and so much more. You know, you think about the Holocaust, you think about slavery, you think about apartheid in South Africa, you think about racism in America, whole people groups and have been marginalized. And, and really, even as a church, we could be accused of pushing people out of church and your type's not welcome here. You know, who you are, get out, get away, get away, get away. And what, what I see God consistently doing is breaking down the lines um, through the book of Acts, he breaks down the lines of men and women. And it's like, no, women are also now welcome. 
uh, young and old. No, the young men and the young women, they have a place in this world. Mm -hmm. The young men, they can dream. The young women, they can prophesy. The old men, they can, they can uh, have visions and dreams and these type of things. So Jesus is constantly breaking down all these lines in the book of Acts. And we're seeing a line here in Acts chapter 13 totally be smashed down. Like there's no racial line that God can be separated by. Yep. There's no, you know, gender line, like male and female. Like, no, God works through both of us. And uh, the young and old, no, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't be pushing people out and pushing people away just because we're not comfortable with that. Um, if, you, if you didn't get a chance to hear that message, uh, it, you can find it on our YouTube channel or on the East Coast website or on our app. But it was about relationships. And the point that I was making is we must love people above our own pain, mm -hmm. above our own pride, above our own prejudice, above our own past. We must love people because the Bible says to love God with, your, with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So then you must love people over your pain. So that I, yeah. I mean, it was kind of easy for me to pull that out because I just preached that yeah. really yesterday. Yeah, totally um, talked about it. It was good. Um, kind of going along with those lines. So Paul and Barnabas came into this place. They were invited into the synagogue to share an encouragement. They shared it. Then they said, come back again next Sabbath and share it again. And when they did, the entire town came. Now that ended up making some of the Jews jealous, which then caused them to start getting persecuted. So they're like, yes, come, come, come. And then they're like, oh, you're too popular now. We want you out of here, which is basically what happened. And so they were getting forcibly pushed out of the town. And yet this verse just floors me in 52, verse 52, it says, and the disciples were continually filled throughout their hearts and souls with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And I just thought they were getting persecuted and pushed out of town, literally like, don't let the door hit you on the way out. And it says their hearts and souls were filled with joy continually. So they were obedient. This is what I got out of this. They were obedient to the call that God had brought them to. And so many people got to hear the gospel. The entire town got to hear the gospel. And yes, a few people got jealous and pushed them out, but it didn't take away the fruit of what um, their obedience was going to produce. Like all of those people now knew uh, about eternal life and they knew the gift of salvation and they knew that and it was going to spread. And so they were obedient. They did what they were called to do. When they left, it said they shook the dust off, off the town. And so my, my thought is just be obedient to what God is calling you to do right now. Is he calling you to reach out to someone you haven't talked to in years? My dad, he said that uh, friends of his from high school are reaching out to him out of nowhere, talking to him and friending him on Facebook. And he's making connections with people he hasn't talked to in years and years and years. And he's being obedient to take those opportunities and share the love of God with them. And so what opportunities is God giving you and bringing you in this different season that we're in right now that you could be obedient and to walk through and then uh, have the Holy Spirit lead you. And then the joy, it says the joy of the Lord will fill you, your heart and your soul continually. I love that. I think I've been challenged to, uh, by the Lord to reach out to some people that I wouldn't normally do that. Yeah. And the good thing is, is they're really receptive Very to receptive. it. Very receptive. Or maybe in the past, I would feel a little apprehensive, almost like, ooh, you know, like, we don't have that kind of relationship, you know, like if I say something, they might push me out and, you know, and all of that. Not not afraid of being pushed out, but it's, you know, let's just say your kid's on a baseball team and the baseball coach, you might not have that kind of relationship with that person. And you're like, hey, baseball coach, you want to know who Jesus is? That could be a little awkward if you don't have that open door. But I found that right now we have got a lot of open doors. Yep. Some of the simplest things you can do is offer to pray for someone. Say, hey, if you ever need prayer, you can invite them to an online service. Uh, that That's something that can be done, like, very easily right now. I've, People I've, are open right yeah. now. And online services are, like, easy. You know, yeah. hey, come to my church. Just go to this website. You yeah. know, that kind of stuff. Stay in so your pajamas and turn it on your phone. <laughs> Here and the, go. those little asks can lead to like big doors that you can walk yes, through it's huge. Um, and just share the love of God with people. And so that, that's something I'd encourage you to do. Do you want to give a final word on the chapter? We yeah. have a minute and a half left. It goes along with what you were saying in verse 41. It says, look, you mockers and marvel and perish and vanish away for I am doing a work in your days. 
And this word jumped out to me. God is working. Like Matt just said, there are doors being open. There are people who are more open and receptive than they've ever been before. And it reminds me of this song that we've been singing long before the pandemic. It's called Waymaker. And it says, even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And I believe that this song is prophetic, meaning that before we ever were in this position, this song was was dreamed up, it was made, it was produced, it was it was pushed out into the church, and so many people know it now. And we can now sing that song and say, give us eyes to see what you're doing right now, Lord. I'm, I'm excited to see hearts of people, the heart of worship being restored, because people are desperate right now, and they are go what is going to help them, what is going to give them hope, what is going to give them joy? Worship changes the atmosphere. And so if you're if you're in a place where you are feeling like just down, Turn on a worship song. Turn on Waymakers. Google it. Waymaker. I don't know who it's by. It, you'll find it. Waymaker. Miracle. Yes. Oh, it's so powerful. Keeper. But God is doing something. And so I think we need to have our eyes open to see what he is doing so that we can be ready to participate and be a part of it. So we love you guys. Thanks so much for joining us on Morning Breath. We hope you have a great day and that you'll join us for the show tomorrow. Yep. See you then. Bye-bye. You are listening to Morning Breath from East Coast Christian Center. Merritt Island, Vieira, and Coco.